Hi Beans, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Remy and I share lots of vegan recipes and tips to help you live well. And today we're gonna do some lattes, but not just any lattes, some caffeine free or very low caffeine lattes. I am personally not a big fan of coffee. For one, the caffeine hits me really, really hard and I'm definitely sensitive to caffeine. And lately I've also been cutting back on how much caffeine I consume in a week. So these are some of my favorite alternatives. They're really tasty and you can really get creative with any kind of caffeine-free latte if you just play it up with some really nice flavors and some plant milk. So today we're gonna to be making a hojicha latte. We're making a date seed coffee. We're also gonna be making a peanut butter maca latte, a cacao latte, and a cinnamon sweet potato latte. Whether you're just avoiding caffeine or not a fan like coffee like myself, I hope you'll enjoy these lattes. They're really fun. And again, you can get creative with them and of course adjust the sweetness to your liking. The link to all the recipes will be down below in the description box. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's make lattes. We are gonna start with a hojicha latte. Hojicha is actually a type of green tea. It comes from the same exact plant as matcha, green tea, even black tea actually. And the difference between hojicha and matcha is that it's much more toasty and kind of warm in flavor. It's been roasted, so it's much darker in color as well. And because it's been roasted, there's a lot lower caffeine content in hojicha. So it's actually very minimal and it has kind of almost like a graham cracker, sort of chocolatey flavor. You prepare it the same way you would matcha by using a ground up hojicha powder. And I love this option because not only does it kind of look like coffee, but it also has the same fun process where you make it the way you would matcha. So for me, I still feel like I'm sticking to my morning ritual of making myself a matcha latte, but I get to enjoy something that has no caffeine added. Hojicha can be enjoyed either iced or hot, and I think it's really delicious with cinnamon flavors, maple, just a lot of warm spices because it does have that toastiness to it. I highly, highly recommend this if you are a green tea fiend and looking for something a little lower in caffeine or a drink that you enjoy after dinner or later in the evening. The next one is really simple. It's a cacao latte, but you can kind of think of it almost as an iced chocolate or a hot chocolate because really all you're doing is enjoying some high quality cacao with the delicious plant-based milk. Making this latte is super simple. You wanna grab some cacao powder or cocoa powder. And I actually like to use a matcha sift here because I find that it helps to break up some of the clumps that typically occur in cacao powder. And then I also add just a little bit of maple syrup. You could use any kind of sweetener that you like, preferably something liquid. And I'm also adding a little bit of vanilla bean paste, but you could also just use some vanilla extract as well. To whisk it up, I'm adding just a small amount of hot water. And then I'm actually gonna use my matcha whisk to nicely whisk it together. I also recommend adding just a tiny pinch of salt to bring out the sweetness and add a little bit of balance to the drink. Once you have your cacao mixture ready to go, you wanna pour it into a mug of choice. I'm serving it with a steamed milk, so it is a little bit more like a hot chocolate, but if you wanna enjoy it iced, just pour it over some cold plant-based milk as you would a regular latte, and it is so delicious. Chocolate does contain a little bit of caffeine, but compared to coffee, it's pretty minimal. So I think this is an amazing option and it also tastes delicious. Like who doesn't love chocolate, right? A sweet potato latte might sound a little funky, but it's actually really popular, especially in Asia. So growing up and spending time in Korea and Japan, I would see it all over the place. For this recipe, you can use pretty much any sweet potato that you like, but I opted for a Japanese sweet potato because I find that they have almost this cake-like flavor, very vanilla and warm flavors to it, and they're extra sweet, especially when you roast them. So to prepare this, you just wanna stab some holes in your potato, and then I cut them into chunks to speed up the roasting process. Place them on a baking sheet. You can add just a touch of oil to help it roast a little bit better, and then place it in the oven until it's nice and soft, and it should be almost caramelized. Then you wanna remove the skin, and when you're ready to make the latte, you're gonna add it to a blender along with some cinnamon and medjool date for some sweetness. You could also add any other warming spices you like, like pumpkin spice blend, and then I'm adding plant-based milk as well. Blend until it's nice and smooth, and then pour into mug of choice. This is delicious, hot or iced, but I would recommend this one hot, just because I feel like it's extra toasty that way, and a very, very cozy latte, so it's perfect for the fall. This is another really fun one. It's a maca and peanut butter latte. So to make this one, I'm using some plant-based milk plus a little bit of hot water added to that. And then I'm adding some pitted medjool dates. These have a really nice caramel-like flavor and you wanna make sure that you're using one that's really gooey and soft. If you find your medjool date to be a little bit tougher, you can soak it in hot water to help soften it up before you blend. 
Then I'm adding the maca powder. Maca powder has also a very caramelly flavor in my opinion and it's a great adaptogenic that has a lot of health benefits to it. So I love that we're sneaking it into this latte for both function and flavor. We are of course then gonna add our creamy peanut butter. You could also use almond butter, but I think peanut butter is just the perfect complement to all the caramel flavors we have going on. It's almost like a Snickers latte. Of course, we're adding just a touch of vanilla extract or bean paste, and then we're gonna blend this up until it's nice and smooth. If you have any remaining chunks, you may wanna strain this out. Sometimes there could be little chunks of the date pieces, but otherwise just serve it up and enjoy. You could also top with just a little bit of cinnamon to garnish. Now, I saw this idea for date seed coffee all over Pinterest and I knew that I had to try it because I had a bunch of medjool dates at home. It's supposedly a really amazing coffee alternative that tastes like coffee but obviously has no caffeine in it and it's also a great way to repurpose your date pits. To start, you want to roast your date seeds and don't make the same mistake I did. Make sure you wash them and let them dry totally. You don't want any sticky residue remaining because that sugar is going to burn in the oven. Once they have been thoroughly roasted, you are ready to grind up your date seeds. I did this in my blender, but if you have a coffee grinder or a spice grinder, I think that would be so much more effective and just a lot easier. And then once you have your powder ready, you're going to need some kind of coffee filter set up and just kind of serve it as you would a drip coffee. So I just used a filter over this kind of beaker. I don't have a lot of coffee equipment at my house, but if you do, feel free to use some more appropriate equipment. Just let this drip through as you would coffee, and then you could enjoy this as kind of just a black coffee, or you could turn it into a latte and combine it with milk. I asked a coffee drinker to try this, and apparently it tastes not so much like coffee, a little bit more like tea, but it does have a slight bitterness and toastiness to it. It is somewhat similar to the hojicha in flavor, and I think this could be a really amazing alternative if you're someone who's sensitive to the caffeine in coffee. So overall, I will say this definitely worked. I just don't know if it's worth all the effort to make this latte very regularly because you will be eating a lot of dates. All right, fiends, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoy these and I hope you'll try them out if you have a chance. My personal favorite is the hojicha latte because it's basically like a matcha latte, but toasted and really, really great as an alternative. But I also love the peanut butter maca latte. It's incredible and a great way to get your maca in. As a reminder, all of the recipes will be linked in the description box below, so check that out. I will also link all the equipment, like the hojicha powder that I use, as well as the blender, everything you need for your lattes. If you try any of these out, I would love to see it. Share with me on Instagram, tag me at veggiekins, or leave a comment on the blog or down below in the YouTube video. All right, I will see you in another video soon. Bye.